I am somewhere up here in the middle of, of the bugs and the beautiful wilderness that is North Canyon City, north of Canyon City, about 30 minutes north. And it's stunning. I mean, take a little bit of a look around. There's mountains and trees, and yeah, this is perfect for the Rivian. So I wanted to show you what it's like to actually camp out of it. There's a lot of little features hidden in the Rivian, Easter eggs, if you will, but they're actually pretty useful too. And I have a tent. I have got stuff with the Rivian camp speaker. We're going to have a lot of fun. So enjoy the ride. So it's a little bit raining and bugs again. So ignore all that, <laughs> but I'll show you around the Rivian. Um, hopefully you've all seen this before. Great place to be. I actually really am loving this green interior, the forest edge, as they call it. With the white and these 22 inch sport wheels, it's a looker for sure. I will say if you're kind of out in the wilderness, very camp focused out in the middle of nowhere, you probably want the 20s with the bigger, beefier off-road tires. Um, but as far as camping goes, this thing, I guess you can get like a rooftop tent or really a bed top tent. We had that actually on our vehicle we had back in February on the one we were doing all the testing on. Uh, we took the tent off and never actually used it which is kind of a bummer. So if you're a plebeian and can't afford a roof or a bed top tent, I, uh, there are options. I'll show you back here how you open the bed is this button right here that just falls down. It's not actually a power bed. It just is damp, so it falls down, which is nice. And then our tonneau cover, see if you can hear this. We're all taking bets on when it breaks, <laughs> but <laughs> hashtag warranty. Um, this is the bed and this will be my bed. It is 51 ish inches wide and with the tailgate up, it's about 54 inches long. So it's a four and a half foot bed, but with the tailgate down 84 inches long, I have a tent. My roommate, Chris has graciously offered me one of his two person tents that in theory is this exact dimensions. So in just a bit, we'll get that set up, but that's kind of the bed, very useful space. And you got a couple power outlets. You do have a air compressor where you can actually set the PSI and everything, which is really awesome. So it makes it really great for trail going. You can air down and then air back up your wheels and tires. So nifty, a lot of tie down pieces. And then yeah, two outlets in the bed, one in the cab, and I think one in the gear tunnel. Speaking of gear tunnel, that's right here. Got some filming equipment. And on the other side, actually there's a, a oh, 12 volt here and then a 120 volt on the other side. That's what it is. So might even use that in the morning for some breakfast. And then back here, great cabin. Um, actually, we took this up um, Pikes Peak for the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. We didn't race it. We just took it up to be watchers, viewers. And um, I slept back here. That was terrible. So I'm not doing that tonight. I'll be in the actual bed. There is really good ugh, under seat storage. So you can store all sorts of things in there. This is actually where we currently have charging cable, the, the air compressor cable, max 150 PSI, wow. And a locking cable, which will actually work with your gear guard. That's pretty cool. The storage only goes two thirds of the way across because the last bit is your sub for the Rivian elevated by Meridian sound system. Fantastic sound system. And then of course up here, you have your storage in the center console, which is really small. I mean, there's really, yeah not much in there and there's no glove box. So that is your glove box. Somehow my Miata has a glove box and this doesn't kind of funny, but big door pockets. I mean, plenty of storage overall. Don't you hate it when you get in your car and get ready to start your drive, you start your music and your navigation, and then you have nowhere to put your phone or you're already driving and the spot you thought would work for your phone just results in chaos. Fortunately, I found the car phone holder from Lamikau. It has easy foolproof installation. In the box, you get the mount, the magnet, and even a wipe to allow for easy installation on your phone or phone case. It features a unique twist and lock function, so it grips the car vent much better than other vent mounts. The magnet is strong enough to hold any phone or tablet up to 6.6 .6 pounds. It's more than any phone I've ever heard of. Plus, it works with basically any type of mobile phone. It's simple and compact and allows for 360 degrees of rotation. And mounting to an air vent means no more suction mounts blocking your views on the windshield. We'd like to thank Lamicall for sponsoring today's video. Check the link in the description to find yours today. 
Right, so a great part of owning a Rivian, whether you're camping or not, is the frunk, the front trunk. And I always struggle to find the opening. It's slightly off center. There's a button you can open it, or you can use the key fob. I've got it full of drinks here. Great for camping. This is like my favorite spiked uh, seltzer water from Upslope in Boulder. Shout out Upslope. And we've got some ice, only one pound. <laughs> you can obviously stack this thing so full of ice if you wanted, probably 10, 20 pounds of ice, drinks. There's so much room for activities. This is a huge front trunk. I could probably sit in here. Maybe I'll try to do that later. Um, actually underneath though is a, a drain right here and that's where the, all the water will drain out of. Currently it's not really sealing very well. I think, not sure. The drain plug might've been broken by someone. So I'm not pointing fingers at Rivian. It very well could have been Kyle. <laughs> You can see it's already kind of dripping out from underneath. Like that's actually yeah, kind of a steady stream. But this is a great piece of camping. Just have this open. Now, unlike something like the lightning, there are no lights under here. So there are a couple lights here, but it's not quite as big or well lit as the mega power frunk from the lightning. And then, of course, you can take that down, cover all your drinks if you want to hide them from siblings or the like. But it's a cool little system to, yeah, have drinks at a party. Again, very useful space. I had all my luggage I needed for like the whole week just up here, which I have moved elsewhere for this. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So all storage in total is 64 cubic feet. That's a lot as for a pickup truck. That's really incredible. So what do you say we get this thing set up to actually camp? We're gonna set up the tent and maybe wait a few minutes because it's now starting to rain, but <laughs> in just a bit, We'll set up the tent and show you what the campsite is actually like, and we'll get the camp speaker out and all that. Actually, a lot of you have asked about the camp speaker, how it sounds. I did a whole review on the Rivian camp speaker, but I didn't compare it to anything. I just mentioned it sounds good. So I did bring my HomePod. We're going to see if we can get that to work, and that would be interesting. But Rivian, let's go. Great, rain let up just enough for us to set up the tent. Also, I'm gonna kill every single one of these bugs. I love the outdoors. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I want to actually mention, so we're out here in the middle of nowhere, like I said, that's been a little bit of a challenge, not like existentially crisis yet, but there is no charging. Um, there's an, a wall outlet that I've trickle charged with a little bit, which means I got like 2% overnight or 3%. And in Canyon City at the one of the community colleges is the only level two charger. It does a whopping five kilowatts at a charge point station. And it's not even free. So that's the challenge with specifically Canyon City. Now, only 60 or 70 miles away is Salida, which is where Rivian's first Rivian Adventure Network DC fast charger is. That's super cool. I charged there on the way out here. So I'm not like critically low or anything, um, but yeah, go check out out of spec motoring because I've done a whole road trip on how to get here. And that's either out or coming out, depending on the time frame of this video. And that shows much more of the actual experience of this. But I wanted to capture just for you guys camping. So let me show you around. Um, MSR Hubba Bubba NX tent. Again, thanks to my roommate Chris for letting me borrow this. Um, I apologize to everyone who watched this set it up. We don't know what we're doing. Although that was pretty easy. This was like kind of idiot proof as a tent. And um, it's perfect. It's like the perfect size. In theory, it was, and it actually came out to be absolutely correct. So got it actually tied down. So normally you would stake out the um, rain cover with stakes on the ground. And I actually have it tied down here to these tow hook or these hooks here and this hook. And actually Austin rigged up a super nice system with a tent stake <laughs> right down there. And then right here, another tie down right here. So this puppy really ain't going anywhere. 
And again, it's like the perfect size. I'm pretty impressed. And then on the inside, now <laughs> the, the challenge is it's not a like an end exit and entrance tent, it's in the middle. So we moved it, I don't know why, because it's rotationally symmetrical. And so I just need to like somehow get in, which I'm, I'm sure I'll do. And got the air mattress in there, which fits, sleeping bag, air mattress. Yeah, we didn't know how to use the air mattress thing. So what I did was use the onboard air compressor of the Rivian R1T, which was absolutely clutch. So that's awesome. And then, yeah, to complete the campsite, you of course have the Rivian camp speaker. This thing is amazing. It actually does sound pretty good. And here we go, the flashlight. Now, if you don't already know, this light is special because this is the 7,777th battery cell of the Rivian R1T. The battery pack consists of the other 7,776 7, cells. So this is the last one. Lights up, very bright. We'll show you later at night, but a thousand lumens, really solid metal build quality. It's perfect. And then this thing also feels incredibly solid. Um, check out my full review of the speaker, but it looks good, acts good. I'm gonna have this in the tent with me, listening to my tunes like a true woodsman. <laughs> and um, when it gets dark, I'll show you how actually, the how the lantern looks because Unlike, like when we were reviewing this truck and the speaker back in Denver, Fort Collins area, it was, you know, even when it got night, there were still city lights. We are in the middle of nowhere. There is no light. So this is the time to test out the lantern capabilities of the Bluetooth speaker. But as far as sound, let's go take a look at how this compares to the HomePod. So you now join us in a controlled environment with the Rivian camp speaker and the Apple HomePod. Now, Regardless of Apple fandom, the HomePod is a genuinely good sounding speaker. And a lot of people, when I did the full review of this, wanted to know how it sounded compared to some of the competition. No, these are not direct competitors in any way. The HomePod requires Wi-Fi to actually function. That's why we're not in the truck right now. Um, we're at a house with a Wi-Fi network. So, but sound quality wise, people are wondering, I was wondering especially, so I have them literally side by side. They're not quite the same components either. The HomePod has a four inch woofer with seven tweeters versus this one has, I think a one inch tweeter, two and a half inch mid-range driver and two one inch mid-range drivers on the side and two, I think two inch flat woofers on the side, which I think are synchronized. So let's see how it sounds. We're gonna start with the HomePod and um, that's another difference is this is Bluetooth through the phone. The HomePod actually uses internet connectivity. So that's a slight difference, which means hopefully the internet here is good enough to play this song. Let's find out. So that's 15 seconds of a song that we are allowed to play. And now I'm going to switch to the actual Rivian camp speaker back to Bluetooth here. So with the camp speaker, it does have some quirks about it. Um, you just pull it out of the truck, which we'll show you later, but um, with, to even get the lantern to turn on, we had to actually connect it to a phone for some reason. It can sometimes be glitchy with how it actually operates. You would hope it just pulls out and connects right up with the last phone it was paired with. Not always the case, but it seems to be working fine right now. So I have it switched to my phone and we'll do the exact same volume level. We'll just see how it sounds. Oh, go back to the beginning. So, um, both sound good, actually. The HomePod is definitely better, richer bass, more clear on the highs, but the camp speaker really holds its own and it has quality components. I don't remember the exact name of the company that makes the components, but they are name brand to an extent. Um, again, go watch my entire video on how this is made and what, it's, what it has and everything. But as a quick example, there's a song for you for the sound quality. Now you know what you're camping with. This thing is water resistant, has a lantern functionality, much more camping friendly. Sorry, HomePod, we don't have anything from Apple yet or 
yeah, any other competitors like that. But this sounds pretty solid. I'd say totally on par with any other $100, maybe even $150 Bluetooth speaker. And according to Rivian, about six and a half hours play time for music. It's a 36 watt hour battery and um, a lantern. What's up guys, Editor Jordan here. Um, because I know all of you are our nerdy core audience, I sh thought I should clarify a bit more. The HomePod actually, because we're in the middle of nowhere with very, very, very bad Wi-Fi, I mean, it was just enough to play the music. The HomePod streams everything. Nothing is locally stored on it. You can't even Bluetooth from your phone to the actual HomePod. So the HomePod wasn't as clear as normal, and I was a bit confused because I was like, wow, this actually isn't sounding as good as the Rivian speaker in that scenario. So it's because of the limited bandwidth of the streaming. So now I'll show you the HomePod with the same song with actually good internet, and we'll just see how they all three compare. I'm, I know I'm dragging this on a long time, but this is fascinating to me. So there you go. Streaming on music especially brings much more clarity to the highs, and that's why the, the HomePod now sounds better. Um, but the Rivian camp speaker is still really, really good, honestly. Like, not incredible. <sighs> so there you have it. Streaming speeds have a huge... Um, so there you have it. Streaming, like Wi-Fi speeds specifically, um, has the effect on streaming to make the highs much more clear. And so that's what allows the HomePod to sound much better on actually good Wi-Fi networks. Anyways, thanks for nerding out with me. Back to the show. All right, here it is. Beautiful campsite in the dark with the cool Rivian logo shining next to the truck. Awesome. So yeah, here's the tent. And uh, so something interesting about, I guess, the Rivian campsite at night Unlike the Ford F-150 Lightning, there is no, I guess, zone lighting. So you do have, of course, the light bar and the interesting pill-shaped... Oh, they just turned off. Yeah, so everything turns off. Um, you can, of course, leave, like, the daytime running lights on. Let me see if I can unlock it again. There we go. Um, but the F-150 has, like, all these different zones of lighting you can turn on and leave on indefinitely. That's kind of built into the truck. This one, not so much, although it's really not going to bother me because, A, I'm just going to go to sleep. But also, I have <laughs> the lantern. So the lantern, as I mentioned inside, is a bit hard to turn on sometimes. Um, like, for some reason, the light has required me to pair my phone with it first, and then it would turn on. I think that's software glitching. It could just be with our truck, too. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, but it looks really good. I, it's hard to really show you on the phone how it actually looks. But in person, it looks great. And this is the lowest brightness setting, I think. Um, and that even showcases me enough to see like the actual tent. And then if I, yeah, see, that's the problem. I unhooked my phone because the audio wouldn't go through when I film. And then it bricks the lantern. So that's a huge disappointment. Um, Again, that could just be this lantern, but I actually had similar issues with the lantern in the other Rivian we tested a few months ago. So still some work they could do with that, but it's really not much different between minimum and high brightness on the lantern. And so I, again, it's hard to show you actually, but I can see the tent in person. <laughs> I just don't know if you can with the lantern. Um, but it's definitely usable at a really dark campsite, just like where I am tonight, where it's literally pitch black there is no light and so the lantern does a lot more here than it would say in your backyard in a town where there's other natural city lights and stuff around it but the light that really does the trick is this one the torch as i mentioned earlier that immediately is like night and day literally daytime now uh and that's the lowest setting then there's medium and then there's high, which is just, yeah, suddenly daylight everywhere. It's blinding, like literally, compared to what it was a second ago. So this torch is really fun um, and very useful. So between those two sources of light, pretty cool that the Rivian has you covered. Not that you couldn't bring your own 
sources of light from any sort of outdoor store but this is one way the Rivian is camp ready so I'm going to basically go to bed the tent is ready I just still can't believe how perfectly it fits in this bed again this is the uh Haba Bubba X in something like that not really a tent enthusiast all right got my tent set up I don't know if you can see that I guess I'll add the other light for effect there we go nice speaker there and another cool little feature by the way is so my microphone died earlier and i can actually use the usb-c port on the back and now it's a mobile power bank so i can plug my microphones into this and they'll charge right up so that's pretty sweet um of course you could use power outlets from the truck as well i mean there's a lot of options with this thing but there we go some lighting anyways i'll let you know how it all goes and i'll see you in the morning and we'll do some other things with the rivian that you would maybe do at a campsite such as make coffee eggs toast what's up good morning i am austin jordan's brother um wanted to get some sunrise shots of the uh, rivian and uh i don't think jordan would mind if i moved it real quick so uh let's do that What the heck? Hey. Hey. This is not what I signed up for. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, hey, bruv. Nice <laughs> so, uh, how'd it go? Best truck to camp in ever, I guess. <laughs> Nice crisp morning, nice sunrise. Get some coffee going, I think. This is modern coffee making. <laughs> got my grinder, got my uh, kettle from Bun. What is that? It's a, it's a grinder. All right, well, this is the uh, this is the way with the Rivian, the power outlets. Got four outlets on this truck again, so got that plugged in there. By the way, you have to, do, you have to turn them on if you want to use them. And they're inside the uh, settings for charging. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but I do find it a little disappointing there's only one outlet in the front, or sorry, in the gear tunnel. There's no outlets in the front, actually. That's another big dis uh, difference from the F-150 Lightning. Two outlets in the bed, of course, but if your bed is full of tent, then you're not necessarily using your bed as a kitchen. So, of course, a camp kitchen will make this pretty much obsolete. Um, but until then, or if you don't want to opt for the camp kitchen, you have one outlet up here. You could of course use a power strip or something or a splitter and the in cabin outlet is underneath here which is not always the easiest to access so lots of power four outlets not going to complain but the lightning has 10 outlets so not sure why they didn't add just a bit more just in case because i think there's plenty of people that would find that to be convenient so anyways i think we're going to make some coffee tear down the tent a little bit and um yeah we're gonna make some breakfast too. Cheers. This is real backcountry living. <laughs> Um, actually, so I moved the truck over here for some great photos. Got some photos. Now the bugs are literally destroying us. So gonna move it back over 
over there. Whip up a couple eggs, turn on the tent. Just about called day. back of a truck yes sir of course real camping i feel like you would use you know some sort of fuel and stove or campfire but electric griddle and electric truck just works well while he's wrapping up eggs of course we'll make toast next i'll talk about some of the interesting things, like I had it plugged in here over the last couple of days and with a standard wall outlet, which will only give me like one point something kilowatts, really not great. So that's definitely an issue kind of out in the middle of nowhere is charging. So I do have 56% state of charge, so I'm totally fine to get back into town to do some more charging, which I'll do on the road trip video. So again, check that out on out of spec motoring, but Really beautiful. I love the idea of getting out, especially with an electric truck, electric vehicle kind of off the grid, which is ironic because it does need the grid to survive. Now, if you were on a situation where you could take this out in the middle of nowhere for a while, let's say a week, and you had solar capabilities, like some solar panels you could lay out somewhere, that would trickle charge it enough to get you back home. But Rivian is constantly updating and releasing more of their adventure network chargers, both the DC fast chargers, as well as the kind of like trailhead AC chargers, which is pretty awesome. So overall, pretty good package. Works pretty well for camping, but um, sometimes you just can't give up on a house. <laughs> so that's about it with my video of camping with a Rivian R1T. All the little features that are beneficial. Got the toast going. Austin, what do you think of the R1T? Mr. He wants a Maverick. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty great. So Austin works for Tesla, has driven hundreds of Teslas. What do you think of driving the, the Rivian? Because they took a lot of pages out of Tesla's book. Which... Uh, they absolutely did. Um, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's very incredible how well it handles for the size that it is. Um, you can tell a lot of ex Tesla people right there because there's a lot of features in there that are like nearly identical to how uh, Teslas are laid out just as far as like UI. But um, yeah, I mean, I love it. I think it's great. It's definitely got its kinks, but uh, taken into consideration, this is the first year of the first model. Um, I'm overall super impressed. Yeah, it's a great truck. And just doing things like this is really, really pretty fun. I feel like I should do this a lot more often. <sighs> Mosquito. Ugh. The bugs are a disappointment, <laughs> but otherwise, great. The only other thing I want to point out before I wrap up is air suspension is awesome, but there is no way to like level the truck, which isn't usually a big deal. Um, but like right now, it'd be nice if the griddle was perfectly level and the truck is almost level. So if it could just work the air suspension a tiny bit to level itself, that would be awesome. Um, again, I'm not a suspension expert, so I don't know how that would affect the kinematics and everything, but that would be great for both cooking and sleeping. Um, cause it's hard to find exact level of ground, but tent works in a bed. And again, that tent for those of you wondering is on the other side, the <laughs> hubba bubba, what a name, the hubba bubba, what's it called? Gear tunnel, by the way, I just love it. Hubba Bubba NX two-person tent is the exact dimension of the bed with the tailgate down. It's amazing how they did this like tri-fold system to where it extends it from 54 inches to like 84, whatever it is. Really pretty. <laughs> nice. Over, over easy. Nice, nice dodge. All right. I'm going to eat my egg and hit the road. This is our truck, so let us know what else you want to see with it. Hopefully even the camp speaker and stuff helped a little bit, but again, it's having some major 
okay, not major, but annoying quirks that are just, yeah, they annoy me in the worst possible moments. Otherwise, great truck. Great truck.